Good morning, wet shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with Georgetune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. In case you didn't know, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning and welcome to the July 17th, 2023 episode of Second Cup. Great to be with you this morning. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. I am using Bones uh, Shark Bite uh, in the Keurig Cup. Um, a, little, a little more on that a little bit later on in the show regarding uh, the uh, Keurig Cup and the Keurig Coffee Maker and that sort of thing. But uh, I hope this past Saturday you were able to tune into Instagram where the Razor Company had a live stream of a wet shave uh, that I took part in. I was really, really flattered to be invited uh, to be on the broadcast. I had an absolutely great time. If you happen to be on YouTube on Friday evening, I uh, did a uh, like a, a one and a half, two minute announcement that it was all going to take place the following morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, kind of new to Instagram. I have an Instagram account, but I'm still not uh, really up to speed on all the tools and possibilities that it offers. I should be using it more. Uh, but again, I'm a little bit foreign to the interface, so I have to uh, use it a little bit more and warm up to it uh, and maybe you know post some content up there. So I was really... Uh, I, I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to log in properly. But uh, Angelo Amador Jr., who is the host, uh, really made me feel very, very welcome. Uh, gave me a lot of different tips on making sure that uh, the app was going to work on my phone. And uh, I was able to join uh, with no problem. I had to reverse the camera. <laughs> if you saw it, I had to reverse the camera. Uh, but uh, yeah, once that was done, I was ready to go. I really had a great time. We were joined by Matt, who has a shaving channel called Shaving the Day on YouTube. We'll link to it below. It was great to see him. And also Gardner, who is an entrepreneur and a custom brush maker. He's a, a brush artisan, and he has um, a product called, uh, well, a business called AKA Woodworks, W-O-O-D-W-O-R-X. And uh, he does custom brush handles, which are sold through the Razor Company. And he has an Instagram page, and we'll link to that as well. So I had an absolutely great, great time just talking wet shaving and having a wet shave. I used Lothar Orange, which was absolutely wonderful. The Razor Company very, very kindly sent that to the channel for review. And I used that. I wanted to use that on that live, live stream. Uh, for the first time, uh, you know, I did take it for a test drive, but my first use publicly, I wanted to be, I wanted, I wanted it to be on that live stream, and it was just wonderful. What a great shave soap! A beautiful orange scent that is not overwhelming, and it has a beautiful yogurty, creamy lather that is just really silky smooth and soft on the skin. Really, really terrific stuff. So check out Lothar Shaving Soaps uh, from uh, the Razor Company. Very, very well done. And there was also a link that was sent to me uh, where the uh, artisan who makes Lothar Shaving Soaps demonstrated how to build a lather with it. And I looked at that before actually using it. 
And uh, it worked well. It worked great in the honeycomb shaving bowl. It worked great in the fine shaving bowl. It just really made a beautiful, beautiful lather. So I was just really just so delighted to be invited on the Razor Company live stream uh, this past Saturday morning. I hope you saw it. Uh, If you didn't, get up to my Facebook page because I have linked the replay there so you can check it out at your leisure. So it was really, really a lot of fun. So my thanks again to Angelo, Matt, and Gardner for making me feel very, very welcome. And if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, Get up to the Razor Company to check out Lothar Shave Soap and Aftershave uh, and all the products that they have up there. They really, really are a fine, fine online source for wet shaving gear. So thanks again, gentlemen, for making me feel very, very welcome. I enjoyed my time on the Razor Company's live wet shave stream this past Saturday. Now, let's talk coffee and Keurig coffee machines. As you know, the uh, Keurig coffee machine I had uh, wasn't working, and I had to give it a pretty good descaling, which really cleaned things out. But I thought with Prime Day coming on, perhaps I should buy a new Keurig machine just to be on the safe side because, you know, the price is going to be really, really good. So I went ahead and did that, and I got the Keurig K-Express coffee maker, uh, and it is absolutely wonderful. It has a nice, slim look to it, a small footprint, Uh, It is 12.8 inches long, it's 5.1 inches wide, and it's 12.6 inches high. It has a water holding tank in the back that holds about 42 ounces of water, and uh, it really does a fantastic job. It brews a cup of coffee instantly, and it also has controls on it where you can vary the amount of coffee being made, 12 ounce, 10 ounce, 8 ounce, and it also has a button to where you can make a strong cup of coffee. It really is terrific. Now, it is regularly priced at about $80, and on uh, Prime Day, it was $50. So I went ahead and uh, I pulled the trigger on that, and it is absolutely wonderful. Now, the other uh, Keurig machine I have is the Keurig K-Mini single-serve coffee maker. Uh, I bought that two years ago during Prime Day. And it's a fine machine, but it's not, it doesn't have a holding tank. It has a tank where you add water and then it goes ahead and processes that amount of water that you've put into the tank. So it's water in, water out. And you have to wait about two minutes for the water to heat up before it actually goes through the Keurig K-cup to, uh, to brew your coffee. Now, here's the interesting thing. I just happened to go up on Amazon and to, to look at this. The Keurig K-Mini single-serve coffee maker, the older one that I have, is, a, let's, let's price it, $100. And it's 10% off now uh, for $90. And the, uh, the, one that I, the new one that I have, the Keurig K-Express, which I feel is a superior machine because it has the holding tank, it has the controls for the amount of coffee you want, the strong brew, that sort of thing. That's regularly $80. It's on sale now for $60. I got it for $50 on Prime Day, so I saved 30 bucks. Now, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a selection of a Keurig coffee machine, because I have both, let me just say the Keurig K Express at $60 is the better deal. It's the better machine. No doubt about it. So you might be wondering, why is it that I bought the Keurig K-Mini single-serve machine two years ago? Well, I don't think that the newer machine that I have now is available. But I looked at my order, and my order broke down like this. Let me bring up, let me bring up my order. I'm just going to click on it. There it is right there. So the regular, pri- regular price, the regular price on Prime Day was $69.99. I got prime savings of $6.39 and another Whole Foods credit of $6.39. The prime deal was a savings of $27.26. You add in a couple of bucks for tax. I had some reward points of $10.44. Out the door, that K-Mini machine was (laughs) $16.59. So I, I guess you know why I bought it, because... It was less than $20 with all the incentives that I had. 
Uh, I'm, I'm just sorry that I couldn't apply that to uh, this newer machine. I, again, that was two years ago. Uh, and uh, was it two years ago? Three years ago, 2020. What am I saying? So I don't think this new uh, K Express was available back then. The K Mini was what was available, and it came in uh, at a real nice price, less than $20 after all the incentives. So I didn't have those kinds of incentives this time around, but I did have a nice prime day price, and it really does a great job. So if you're going to be looking, if you're looking for a new Keurig coffee machine, by all means, the Keurig K Express coffee maker is head and shoulders above the K Mini, and it comes in at a lower price right right now. So I'll link both of them below. But really, the K the Keurig K Express coffee maker, that's the one to get. It has the holding tank. It has the different levels of blue of brewing, uh, 12, 10, 8-ounce cups uh, that you can brew, plus the strong brew button. And it also has a descaling button, a uh, descaling light. It'll light up to tell you when your machine needs to be descaled, which is another really, really nice feature. However, viewers and listeners of the shows have told me, don't use tap water and you won't have to descale as often. I'm using spring water right now. I might even use distilled water, as some have suggested. So we're going to use a better quality water in the machine so it doesn't clog up like the uh, K-Mini did from using tap water. But that one's been descaled. It's clean. It's running. But I'm so glad I have the K-Express. It is such a better machine, and it it's really is more feature-rich. So check it out, the K-Express from Curd. Just wanted to pass it on to you. And the coffee that I'm enjoying this morning is the uh, Bones Shark Bite coffee. That's a nice spicy, buttery, rum-flavored coffee that Jamie Horn, Jamie Horn very, very kindly sent along. And I'm, I'm enjoying it in my bean-to-bean -bean coffee mug this morning. So again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. And if you need a Keurig machine, the Keurig K-Express coffee maker, that's the one to get. Viewer Paul DeJardin checked in and he wrote, Hello again, Mark. I'm not too sure if I have mentioned to you about using a hair conditioner as a pre-shave, but I really do need to tell you about this tip. I now use a bottle of conditioner with a pump dispenser as my pre-shave. Rub the conditioner in well, then lather as usual. You'll find the blade just glides over your face like oil on ice. Because all you need is a dime's worth, you can easily reapply between passes. In the end, you have a BBS shave with no irritation. Plus, the conditioner seems to act like a skin moisturizer, leaving your face soft and without any drying or irritation. As usual, take care, Paul. Hey, Paul, thanks very, very much for this. Now, I asked Paul which conditioner product he was using, and he uses one called Native. And there is a native store on Amazon, and they have a variety of scents with uh, the uh, conditioner that the conditioner comes in. And Paul uses uh, a um, mint and cucumber, I believe is what he is. Well, actually, cucumber and mint. That's the one that he's using. But they have uh, several others that uh, you can get. Coconut and vanilla, citrus and herbal musk almond and shea butter. These are available on Amazon. You can check out the prices when you get up there. Uh, I don't think they're really uh, inexpensive. They can be a little bit more pricey, but you know what? The tip is about using a conditioner as a pre-shave. So if you have a conditioner at home, give that a try. Uh, the native conditioner seems to be a very, very good one that Paul enjoys using. And if you're only using a dime's worth from the pump, uh, regardless of price, it's going to last a good long time uh, for your shaves. So thanks very much to Paul for a really, really great shaving tip using a conditioner as a pre-shave. And, and, and again, as I say, he's using the Native Conditioner, N-A-T-I-V-E. It's available on Amazon. They have a Native store up there where you can check out their entire product line. But uh, I'm pretty sure any conditioner out there would give you the same similar results. And uh, I, would, I would think that if you use a good, 
a good conditioner that has some good skin food ingredients is probably going to do a better job than, say, the uh, the bargain, uh, you know, mid-shelf, bottom-shelf kind of conditioners. So, you know, look around and get a good, good quality conditioner to try this with. Uh, I think it'd probably be a good step. I'm going to look into it myself and, and look around for uh, a good conditioner. I'll check out the native conditioner and uh, some others that are top shelf uh, that would uh, really, really be good for a pre-shave. And uh, also, I'll look for something with a pump. That looks like it would be a great way to go because you can use it in between shaves, as Paul says. Just pump a little bit into your hand, and you can use it in between shave passes. That's absolutely fantastic. So, Paul, thanks very, very much for sending along that shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Bart Bartlett checked in with a heads up on an alum product. And he wrote, hi, Mark. Thought I would pass this along. There are a lot of alum blocks and sticks out there from artisans and others. I've gone through almost two of these tie stones in over two years. Now that's spelled T-H-A-I, tie stones in over two years. That's because my post-shave routine uses alum after every shave. Besides the price, what I like is they come in a tube and are easy to use. You don't need a rubber band to keep them from slipping because your fingers never touch the alum. The only trick is to dry them and after replacing the tube top to make sure and store them inverted so that water does not potentially drip to the base, causing the alum to loosen over time. No need for a dry dock. I realize that saving six to ten dollars isn't that much, but why spend more when these work just as well or better? They are the same minerals, and he has a link to them. Uh, let me get the, bring it up on the page here. It's a two-pack deodorant stones of America Thai crystal deodorant, a 4.2 ounce tube, uh, and you get a pack of two. And it says here packaging may vary, but the price for two of these sticks is eight dollars and ten cents looks very very similar to the omega alum stick that you may have seen me use uh during some reviews so i'm going to get these myself for eight dollars and ten cents looks like a great deal and it looks like it'd be great for the shave den and also great for travel and uh it's a uh, crystal deodorant stone it's uh aluminum chlorohydrate it's alum and uh they're advertising it as something for, uh, as a deodorant product. But of course, this is a post-shave alum that you can use uh, on your face. And uh, like uh, Bart, I use uh, alum after every single shave. For me, it was a game changer. It really, really helped refine my technique because uh, it would tell me whether or not I was pressing too hard, over shaving, uh, that sort of thing. And in those instances where I did overshave a little bit or I did press a little too hard or I did shave over an area that didn't have any lather, uh, this alum, alum would really, really help knock down uh, any excessive irritation that might have developed. So it really is a terrific product for post-shave. And this one, uh, $8.10 for a two-pack, I'm definitely going to check it out. Bart, thanks very, very much. Now, this morning, I wanted to give you an update on the honeycomb shaving bowl that was very, very kindly sent to the channel by viewer Alex Lopez. Alex, thank you again very, very much. I'm holding it in my hand here. I guess you can hear that. That's the smooth base, and it has a nice textured body to it on the outside, and the uh, base of the rim has the honeycomb pattern on it, so it's very, very uh, easy to grip, a really, really wonderful grip. And of course, the interior, I don't know if you can hear that, that has a, a honeycomb pot, a honeycomb pattern running throughout, through the entire interior of the bowl. And it really does whip up a fantastic lather. Uh, once again, this is the Van Ulay honeycomb uh, shave bowl that we're talking about here. And uh, in, my, uh, in my original review, uh, I had mentioned that uh, Mark Bagwell had said that it's not... It, there is a little bit of difficulty in cleaning out uh, the shave bowl of the excess lather that you have in there. Well, I've been using uh, this uh, shave bowl for some shaves, and you know what? Uh, it's getting better with every single shave. Uh, and here's what I'm doing. Now, I, I used this last night for a head shave. I built a lather with this uh, using uh, uh, 
uh, Wet Shave Company's Dark Night Shave Soap. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I used the uh, Razor Company's Aluminum Razor, which was great. An A-Best Blade, second use. I used the Doppler Brush from Phoenix Shaving with the uh, Butterscotch Handle. Thanks, Mom. And, of course, I used the Honeycomb uh, Shave Bowl to build a lather in it. Now, after I was done with my uh, shave, and it was a cold water shave, by the way, because it was a warm evening, so I decided to treat myself to a nice cold water water, head shave. It was absolutely fantastic. Very, very refreshing. But uh, in, in cleaning up the bowl, I ran some warm water, uh, not hot, but a little warmer, a little warmer on the warm side. And I just used the Doppler brush and held the bowl underneath the tap and just used that Doppler brush to just whisk away and swirl away all the excess lather that was in there. And it did a great job and it cleaned it out very, very well. Now, you do have to give this bowl a few vigorous shakes. Maybe do so in your shower stall or in the tub because that water, uh, that excess water will get trapped in these little honeycomb pockets. Uh, so you might want to just kind of just give it a couple of vigorous shakes to kind of shake that water out. Uh, now, that is also a good thing, too, because if you fill the, the bowl with some warmer cold water before your shave and you dump it out, that, that water gets trapped in those little honeycomb pockets and actually adds to the water that you're, that you're going to be uh, building a lather with. So uh, when you use this honeycomb shave bowl, uh, don't wet the brush as much as you would with other shave bowls. Uh, just keep the brush a little drier and you'll be surprised how much water is retained in the bowl to help build that lather. Really, really remarkable. So you do have to adjust the water that's on your brush, the water and soap that's on your brush when, when, when loading it up. Uh, so I would, I would give the, uh, your brush a little more of a, of a ring and, and then load the soap and you'll find the water that is retained in this bowl uh, in those little honeycomb pockets really, really adds quite a bit to uh, the shave soap in developing the lather. I was, I was really uh, surprised by that little quality uh, of, the, of, the, of the shave bowl. It really is a terrific shave bowl. It makes, I would say this is the fastest shave bowl for building a lather Anywhere. I mean, you, you build a lather so quickly with this honeycomb shave bowl. It really is remarkable. But again, I did want to update you that it is cleaning up very, very quickly when you use a brush to help rinse it out and move that lather out. And that's what I've been doing. And uh, I normally would do that with uh, my other lathering bowls, and I wouldn't think anything of it. But during my review, I decided to just try to clean the bowl without the benefit of using a brush. And uh, it was okay. It, it was all right. It took a little longer. But now that I'm just using the brush and swirling away the lather and getting in those little honeycomb pockets, uh, it cleans up just as quickly as any other lathering bowl I'm finding. Just make sure to pay attention to the water that's retained in those little honeycomb pockets and... Uh, just be aware of that. It's really a terrific, terrific shaving bowl. My thanks again to Alex Lopez for very kindly sending it along to the channel and allowing me to share it with all the viewers out there. So uh, check out that review if you haven't seen it. And just be aware that the cleanup is as quick, uh, uh, the same as any other shaving bowls that I have used, provided you use a brush to help things along. So again, my thanks to Alex Lopez. Folks, check out the Van Ule Shave Bowl, the Van Ule Honeycomb Shave Bowl. This builds the fastest lather anywhere. It really, really does. It's a fantastic, fantastic shave bowl. Now, before I get out of here, I wanted to recommend a series of movies to you. As you know, the summer blockbuster movie season is underway with uh, Indy 5 and Mission Impossible 7. Mission Impossible 7 is the one I wanted to uh, talk about. I have not seen it yet. I haven't seen Indy 5 yet. I haven't seen Mission Impossible 7 yet. But I, I have to tell you, I love both of these series. They are really, really terrific. 
And uh, I think it's more likely that many out there have seen the Indiana Jones movies versus the early Mission Impossible movies. That's kind of my gut feeling. So if you're going to take in Mission Impossible 7, do yourself a favor and see the previous movies. Now, Mission Impossible 1 is very, very good. Uh, and what's really unique about that one, it was made in 1996, and a lot of the digital effects really hold up well. I mean, they were really, really well done, and the movie is just well done all the way around. Uh, the second one is good, but the series really doesn't, really doesn't take off until Mission Impossible 3. So really, if you want to skip the first two, and just go to three and watch three, four, five, and six in order to prepare for Mission Impossible 7. Yeah, you'll get, you'll get all the background that you need going into Mission Impossible 7. Uh, if you happen to watch all six, all the better. But if you don't have time, then I would definitely watch three, four, five, and six. They really are fabulous movies. And each one just tops the previous. <laughs> really, really wonderful, enjoyable entertainment from Mr. Tom Cruise. I really do enjoy his Mission Impossible movies. Absolutely fantastic. So if you've never seen a Mission Impossible movie, check out Mission Impossible 1. You can skip number two if you want to. Three, four, five, and six really lay the groundwork for where they are in Mission Impossible 7. That's my understanding. So check out the Mission Impossible movies if you've never seen them. And then check out Mission Impossible 7 at your local theater. And as with all of Tom Cruise's movies, this Top Gun Maverick and the Mission Impossible movies, the bigger the screen you see it on, the better. This is what my nephew Mike has always told me. Get to an IMAX theater if you can to see any of these Tom Cruise action movies. They're absolutely fabulous on the biggest screen possible. Mission Impossible 7, hey, check it out. Let me know what you think about it as a summer blockbuster movie, and I hope you enjoy all the other Mission Impossible movies that are available on your favorite streaming service. And that wraps up another Second Cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who contributed to today's show. And I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup.